First Lady's memorable vintage automobile ride in Woodstock, Vermont, actually started in the nation's capital. It was Friday, June 9th, 1967. The leave-taking, the photographers, all the bustle and ado were a familiar departure pattern to Mrs. Lyndon B. Johnson, seasoned traveler and ambassadress of beautification without portfolio. The occasion, a four-day swing through four of the original New England states an intimate look at New England now and then, an opportunity to draw inspiration from America's original grassroots heritage. Her official escort was, appropriately enough, the custodian of the country's natural resources, Secretary of the Interior Stuart Udall and Mrs. Udall. The first stop, Quincy, Massachusetts and the Adams National Historic Site, ancestral home of the second and sixth presidents of the United States. Mr. Charles Francis Adams, a direct descendant of the presidents, welcomed the First Lady to this historic landmark, home of the distinguished family who played a foremost role in shaping the destiny of America. Mr. and Mrs. Adams presided over a family luncheon in honor of Mrs. Johnson. The First Lady was pleased to learn that the china, linens, furniture, and other Adams family heirlooms were specially chosen to enhance the luncheon atmosphere. Burlington, Vermont, and a warm welcome from Governor and Mrs. Philip Hoff. How many enthusiastic crowds, how many handshakes make up the daily itinerary of a busy First Lady? Here in high Yankee country, the count was high. Traditional New England reserve melted under the warmth and sincerity of Mrs. Johnson's response to their greetings. but on to the business at hand, to see for herself how conservation and beautification have made Vermont literally the Green Mountain State. Mount Mansfield at Stowe, Vermont, is more familiar to New Englanders as a wintertime ski resort, important economically to the state. Mrs. Johnson, along with countless other Americans, is finding the peaceful green hills and unspoiled woodlands a summertime inspiration as well. Mountain climbing the easy way. Nearly 4,000 feet in 20 minutes. Really the only way to travel uphill. Maple syrup poured over a bed of ice to congeal. A concoction known locally as sugar and snow finds ready samplers.
From the highest point in Vermont, the land of patriot Ethan Allen and his Green Mountain Boys spreads out in primitive splendor. This state, like my own, was pioneered by people who had to rest their living from a beautiful but not bountiful land. Plowing a granite mountainside and riding a brawling desert have one thing very much in common. The caliber and stamina of the people doing the impossible tasks. Their strength was not only in their backbones, but in their hearts. Peace Air Force Base in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, was a convenient landing spot for the First Lady's visit to the Granite State. Governor and Mrs. John King provided a warm welcome. The object of her visit was to inspect at first hand Strawberry Bank, an authentic restoration of an early American seaport town. A scale model of Strawberry Bank permitted the First Lady to visualize how this unique restoration project will appear upon its completion. The point of interest in this seaport town was the Dunaway General Store. Coming to a general store is no new experience to me. Some of my fondest childhood memories resulted from the general store in Karnak, Texas, which my father owned. It was the gathering place for everyone, from those wanting to buy coal oil and plowshares, or just to talk politics. So I feel quite at home here in the Dunaway General Store and I'm delighted that a general store is included in this restoration of Strawberry Bank. It is stimulating to see what a determined group of citizens with a sense of history can do to preserve our links with the past. In addition to making the first purchase at the general store, Mrs. Johnson also was the first customer at the Strawberry Bank post office substation. It's but a matter of minutes between New Hampshire and Maine, separated by the Piscataqua River. At Two Lights State Park, Cape Elizabeth, the rock-bound coast of Maine stands as a granite symbol of our national resolve to protect our country's resources for the generations to come. This time, Maine's governor and Mrs. Kenneth Curtis hosted the festivities. The First Lady's energetic crusade for enhancing the beauty of America has transformed the ceremonies of tree planting and ribbon cutting into a dedicated national purpose. To choose not roadside stands, but timber stands. Not exploitation, but exploration of the natural beauty which is our birthright. A genuine down east clam bake is an artistic culinary achievement, relying in no small measure upon the natural rustic atmosphere and primitive method of preparation. The necessary ingredients include a seaside location to whet the appetite and patience to wait out the bake time. Mrs. Johnson was convinced more than ever that conservation is a sound move, particularly when the natural resources she seeks to preserve include such delicacies as Maine lobster and a host of shellfish.
Returning again to Vermont, Mrs. Johnson headed for the Woodstock area to inspect and dedicate the George Perkins Marsh Conservation Lake, named for one of America's most dedicated conservationists and a native Vermonter. The state that he loved has a great Indian heritage, evidenced by names like Memphremagog, Atakwichi, Pasumpsic, and Ampampanusic. Damming of the Atakwichi River before it empties into the Connecticut serves a dual purpose, that of flood control and the providing of extensive recreation areas. The dedication of this lake by the First Lady became a picturesque milestone in the national conservation of water resources. Continuing on to Woodstock, the cool recesses of an ancient covered bridge tempted Mrs. Johnson to take a short break from her travels. In Woodstock, as elsewhere, the natives were friendly, the welcome warm and enthusiastic. Here, the First Lady spent a quiet private evening with another champion of conservation, Lawrence Rockefeller and Mrs. Rockefeller, at their home near town. Southwest of Woodstock, nestled in the quiet green hills of Windsor County, lies the homestead of Calvin Coolidge, 30th President of the United States. In the mountain hamlet of Plymouth, Vermont, the First Lady met John Coolidge, son of the late president. The land has its say in the making of a man. And I think that after this New England visit, and especially after this morning driving up that lovely, rushing little stream through these green hills into this charming little town, I can better understand what I have read and heard about President Coolidge, his devotion to duty and his thrift, his well-known ability to express himself in terse phrases. I think it's in the best tradition of preservation that Mr. Coolidge gave this homestead to the state of Vermont to be operated as a museum. One of the highlights of her entire trip was the First Lady's tour through Woodstock in the world's oldest licensed jitney. The elm-shaded streets and the architecture not only reflect a leisurely past, but more importantly, provide a nostalgic look at a way of life fast disappearing from the American scene. It was to encourage the restoration and preservation of such scenes that Mrs. Johnson made her trip through these four of the original 13 states. The home of Mary and Lawrence Rockefeller, Woodstock. We are gathered here today to pay tribute to a man and an idea. The man is George Perkins Marsh, for whom this house was home for so many years. The idea is conservation and its precept that man lives most comfortably and performs most nobly when he is functioning in harmony with nature. We can take considerable pride in what has been done and what will be done to preserve and enhance nature's beauty and to make it available in recreation opportunities for the people. This wayside area dedicated to Robert Frost, poet and interpreter of rural New England, reminds the traveler that 
the best things in life are free. Governor Hoff and Mr. Rockefeller demonstrate the availability of fresh Vermont water for Mrs. Johnson. At Middlebury College, the First Lady received the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. Our country is a sum total of its people. So the choices you personally make, the directions you follow, will in the end determine our nation's future. For in our land, the future of our society is not written in the stars, it is not determined by dictators. It is a sum total of the men and women who are that society. The New England Odyssey of the First Lady was over. She had seen New England now and then, and departed with a realization that the future was in capable hands.